Inshallah, we'll uh, start right now. But before we start, these are three kids that I've been working with for the last four or five months. And I started with them since the basic of the alphabet. Alhamdulillah, we're able to finish it in these five months. And they able to memorize from, he memorized from Surah to Zalzala up to Nas. You can ask him everything. He will recite in the proper way. And also, the sister, his sister, her name is Aisha. She's six years old. The same thing she memorized for is Azul Zilati up to Nas. And Keba also, and I sit with them like four times in the week. And Keba also is the same thing he memorized. I started with, with him from the basic of alphabet up to now he's uh, Surah to Takathu. Surah Takathu. So Alhamdulillah, you know, what I, the reason why I start doing this with them is that once, if you guys remember, some of the kids that came from the Masjid Abu Bakr, that, you know, they, they memorized Quran. So when they came here, people were very impressed about it. They want the same thing. And I say that it's something that we can do. If the community really want us to work together, we can do it, inshallah. Because I've been doing this job since when I was back home, you know, more than six years I've been teaching many kids memorize the Quran through by me, alhamdulillah, with the bless of Allah. I know that I'm trying to show what I did, but from the bless of Allah. So we can still do that, inshallah. That's what I'm trying to work with this kid. By the help of Allah, in next few years, inshallah, I hope, in every year we'll have some kids that will memorize the Quran, inshallah. So I don't want to take a lot of time. I would like, you know, them to recite, you know, each one of them one surah. So from there, I will give a short, you know, introduction. Just some, just you know, some about the, the time. Okay, inshallah. So from there, I will continue, inshallah, because of the time is uh, short, inshallah. So Omar Fadal, recite, and whatever you want to recite, inshallah. Whichever surah? Yes, inshallah. If you want, you can recite it. If you want any surah, you know, inshallah. Which surah? Yeah. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Start with Billah. Oh, yeah. بسم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا زلزلت الأرض زلزالا وأخرجت الأرض وسقالا فقال الإنسان ما لا يومئذ تحدث أخبارا لأن رب فَكَأَوْهَالَ يَوْمَئِذٍ يَسْتُرُ النَّاسُ أَشْتَاتًا لِيَرَوْا أَعْمَالَهُمْ فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِسْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًّا يَرَى ما شاء الله تكبير الله أكبر تكبير الله أكبر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون كلا لو تعلمون علم اليقين لترون الجحيم ثم لترونها عين اليقين ثم لتسعنن يومئذ عن النعيم ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله ما شاء الله بسم الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعاديات طفها والموريات قدها والمغيرات ثبها فأثرنا به نقعا فوسطنا به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه وقنود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لغب غير لشديد أفلا يعلم إذا بؤثر ما في القبور وهزل ما في السدور إن ربهم بهم 
So inshallah, I I will praise Allah. Inshallah, the one who bring all of brought all of us here today, and there's no doubt this type of gathering. We hope a lot of good will come out of it, and we hope that a knowledge will come out of it, which is based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu <laughs> according to the understanding of the pious predecessors. So inshallah today our speaker tonight is Brother Khalid. Alhamdulillah is one of the, the da'i in Washington, those call people to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he is lucky that he sit with a lot of the great scholars in Saudi Arabia. He learned something from them. He's been studying. He was in Yemen. He studied in Yemen. And also he sit with some of the scholars in Medina. And he graduated also from a Marquez a studio which is in Jeddah. So inshallah, we don't want to take a lot of time because the time is not good. But for you guys to know who is he. And he has a lot of good lectures. I never know that about him. But when you go to YouTube, you type Khalid Green, you will find a lot of lectures about him. You can benefit yourself from me from, from those lectures, inshallah. So once again, thank all of you to come and show time to this uh, um, program, inshallah, tonight, inshallah. So we will uh, like to ask him to give the lecture. So after the lecture, I think we can do any announcement. We want to announce, inshallah. It's, it's not this one. Yes, salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is Brother Khalid. I know Brother Khalid very well long time. You know, when he became Muslim, years ago, mashallah. This is the fruit. This is, you know, uh, how Islam grows in this country. You know, I'm, I'm happy to see him again. You know, he's been all over the Yemen, the Saudi. Mashallah, this is one of the brother that bring the next level of, uh, you know, our generation to Islam, mashallah. Jazakallah. Mashallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. alhamdulillah. Nahmadu ta'ala wa nasta'in wa nasta'afiru wa na'udhu billah min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. Min yahdi Allah fu wa muhtad. Wa min yudlil fala hadiyada. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Wahdahu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تسالون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا واتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يدعي الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة وأهلها في النار أما بعد أيها المسلمون أيها الأحبة من الله سبحانه وتعالى be praised, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us and bless us all with ilm and nafia, wa rizq and tayyibah, wa amal and mutaqabbilin. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with thabat al sunnah, because this is the success in this life as well as the hereafter. And as the early generations of this ummah used to say, that the dunya is the dar al amal. That this life is the life of doing deeds. This is our chance right now. And the hereafter is the chance 
is when we'll receive our reward for those deeds. For what we did in this life, we'll receive that in the Akhirah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq and having good deeds that are accepted by Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ayyul Habba, I wanted to talk as brief as possible, as briefly as possible, about the foundations of the community, about how to unite our hearts and what we should establish that unity upon. What is going to bring forth those ties? It's already there for us in Kitabillah wa Sunnat Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the understanding of the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum So as believers were ordered to be like one body, uh, one community, one united strong brotherhood striving together, praying together, fasting together, enjoying the good and forbidding the evil together, and cooperating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His pleasure, tabarak wa ta'ala. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا النِّعْمَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءَ فَأَلَفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبُكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ إِخْوَانًا بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَاءَ حُفْرَةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْقَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَهْتَدُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, He says, And hold fast, all of you together, to the rope of Allah, and be not divided amongst yourselves, and remember Allah's favor over you, for you were enemies one to another, but He joined your hearts together, so that by His grace you became brethren, and you were on the brink of the pit of the hellfire, and He saved you from it. Thus Allah makes His signs clear to you that you may be guided. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored us with the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the bond for our unity and the bond for our community. And He has united our hearts as even in this room we have at least three to four, possibly five different nationalities in this room alone. And what brought us together? Was it that we shared a musical interest? Was it that we shared the same cultural dress? No. But in fact, we came from different parts of the earth and Allah united us together based on His religion, based on Islam, the Islamic Brotherhood. And with regards to that verse I mentioned, in the first part of the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and hold fast to the rope of Allah and do not divide. Hold all together and do not divide. The Salaf or the pious predecessors of this Ummah, they mentioned that the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that some of them said it was the Quran, some of them said it was the Sunnah, and some said it was the Jama'ah. And they all strengthened one another as far as, as, far as those aqwal or those statements is that it is Quran and Sunnah and the understanding of the early generations, meaning the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'anu majma'in. So since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered us to be one, it's on, we, we have to establish that first and foremost, that all, the, the, some of the proofs from the Quran and the Sunnah would show that we're, we're brothers, that we, we don't even have a choice in the matter. We are brothers because we're Muslim. Walillah alhamd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَلِتَكُونَ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةً يَدْعُونَ لِلْخَيْرِ يَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهُونَ لِلْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْمُخْلِحُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Let there arise from, uh, from you a group of people, inviting to all that is good, enjoining all that is righteous, meaning Islam, and forbidding all that is evil, meaning shirk and kufr and, those sinful, and sinfulness, and it is they who are successful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has let us know that we come together commanding the good and forbidding the evil. And that requires from us as individuals and as a community and as a united brotherhood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa ta'awana ala bir wa taqwa. Allah says, uh, co um, cooperate together in righteousness and in taqwa, God fearfulness. So what is taqwa, ayyuhal al-habba? 
Cooperation requires from us supporting one another and establishing community. However, taqwa is obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's commands and avoiding his prohibitions. So if we want taqwa azza wa jal, what Allah has commanded us to cooperate in, we have to begin to practice by doing his commandments and avoiding his prohibitions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq in that. So therefore, whenever we cooperate and work together to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fulfill his commandments, Allah will reward us in the afterlife. And we will receive the benefits in this life as well as the hereafter. The benefits in this life of working together. The benefits of the akhirah of, as we mentioned, it's dara jaza. It's the time when we'll receive the reward for following the commandments of Allah. And since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ta'awun al bidr wa taqwa, He commanded us, Allah gave us the command to ta'awun, to cooperate, then that means it's an act of ibadah, it's an act of worship. An Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, ana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, al muslimu akh muslim, لا يظلم لا يظلم ولا يسلم من كان في حاجة أخيه كان الله في حاجته ومن فرج عن مسلم كربة فرج الله فرج الله عنه فرج الله عنه بها كربة من كرب يوم القيامة ومن ستر مسلم ستره الله يوم القيامة متفق عليه إن هذا حديث البخاري المسلم that was reported by Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said a Muslim is the brother to a Muslim. He does not oppress him, nor does he betray him. Whoever assists his brother, then Allah will assist with his need. And whoever removes a difficulty from a Muslim, Allah will remove a difficulty from him on the day of judgment. Whoever covers the fault of a Muslim, Allah will cover his fault on the day of judgment. So what we learn from this is to support and assist and cooperate with one another as these form the basis of the community. These are just some of the things that help us to form our foundation, what we need. وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه وعن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من نفس عن المؤمن كربة من كربة من كربة الدنيا نفس الله عنه كربة من كربة يوم القيامة ومن يسر على مؤسر يسر الله عليه في الدنيا والآخرة ومن ستر مسلم ستره الله في الدنيا والآخرة والله في عون عبد ما كان العبد في أخيه ومن سلك طريقا يلتمسه فيه علم سهل الله له طريقا إلى الجنة وما اجتمع قوم في بيت من بيوت الله تعالى يطلون كتاب الله ويتدارسونه بينهم إلا نزلت عليهم السكينة وغشيت وغشيتهم وغشيتهم الرحمة وهفتهم الملائكة وذكرهم الله في من عنده ومن بطأ به عمله لم يسرع به نسبه رواه مسلم إن الحديث صحيح مسلم that was narrated by Abu Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said he who removes from a believer one of the difficulties of this life. Allah will remove one of his troubles on the day of resurrection. And he who finds relief for a hard-pressed person, Allah will make things easy for him on the day of resurrection. He who covers up the faults and sins of a Muslim, Allah will cover up his faults in this world and in the hereafter. Allah supports his slave as long as the slave is supportive of his brother. And he who treads the path in search of knowledge, Allah makes that path easy for him, the path of Jannah. And the people who assemble in one of the houses of Allah, meaning the Masajid, reciting the book of Allah, learning it and teaching it, there descends upon them tranquility and mercy covers them. The angels flock around them and Allah mentions him in the presence of those near him. And he who lags behind in doing good deeds, his noble lineage will not make him go ahead. 
So Ayyul Habba, we learn many benefits with this, with regards to establishing this foundation for us. And one of the benefits, aside from already knowing that we should cover one another's faults, and that we should cooperate and be brothers to one another, and that our lineage, our tribal uh, affiliation, our color, our nationality, our language will not benefit us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That what's going to benefit us is our taqwa, how much we fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much we do the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how much we avoid those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden us with and following the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Another benefit we gain from this hadith, ayyul habba is that this hadith tells us the importance of the assass of our community. What is that foundation we need? We need knowledge. And as Jazallah Khairan to Sheikh Muhammad for his efforts here and for all of you for supporting him and for bringing your children as well, that this is a part of having the, the malaika come in this gathering. Even here as we speak now, because we're mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're mentioning verses of the Quran, we're mentioning uh, a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu then we fall under that uh, general hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi where the malaika are, are here. And that the Rahmah and the mercy is here and the Sakina, the tranquility is here. And this is a part of seeking that knowledge which will benefit us in our community. So then, as we realize that brotherhood is an obligation upon us, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-Kareem, إِنَّمَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً فَأَصْلُهُ بَيْنَ أَخْوَيْكُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Verily the believers are brothers, so make rectification between your brothers. That you should try to make islah, try to make uh, rectification when there's uh, difficulty and tr uh, struggles between your brothers. Do your best to unite the hearts. Be the best of the brothers to be the first one to establish the salams and to bring harmony and unity between the brothers in the community. Then the question arises, how and upon what, upon, upon what do we establish this community? How do we revive the community? My beloved brothers and sisters, it first requires that we have a plan of action. And Jazallah Khairan, to one of our brothers who pointed out this great faida to, in, in helping me to prepare this lecture, and may Allah reward him and bless us all with Jannah to Firdaus, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So that we have to have a goal for our, uh, our community. We have to establish a goal for any given community or the greater community. And we require a map or a plan in order to have direction. And that map and that direction will give us a means to be able to judge where we're at. If we don't have a goal and we don't have a direction, we don't know where we're going, nor do we have a means for measuring what we're doing. Ayu al habba that map has been defined for us in the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And sometimes we overlook that when we try to, we get uh, involved in different activities. Sometimes it's political activities. Sometimes we want to do this, we want to do this. And there's nothing wrong with, the, the religion is complete. It has all of those aspects of it. It has an aspect of political involvement, but political involvement based on the Kitab Ilah wa Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the understanding of the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Mijma'een. That's where our political action, if you want to help our brothers and sisters that are suffering in Syria and Libya and Iraq and Afghanistan, make dua for them, supplicate for them, and spend your money uh, supporting them, supporting them and getting them relief, and make dua to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala to, that Allah will help them. This is one of the ways that we can we can involve ourselves. So we, it's coming back to Kitab wa Sunnah. And what does Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala give us as a purpose and a goal? Ayyul Habba, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, Fi Kitab al -Kareem, I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us a purpose and a goal that our community is united upon and that we have to always keep, uh, keep that in, go in, in our minds when we're striving to build our community. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah ta'ala says, and we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone 
and avoid those things worship besides him. So ayyul habba, anything that calls to shirk and disobedience to Allah, we should avoid it. And that which invites us to tawheed, we should strive to do it as much as possible, those good deeds. And that is what's going to help us form, form that assass of the community. That's that foundation that we're talking about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ بِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord has ordered you to worship none but Him alone, and, do, uh, and to your parents be righteous. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned as one of the best deeds that you can have along with Tawheed is that you're righteous with your parents. Again, this forms our foundation in the community. And I'll, at the end, we'll tie it all together and you'll see why. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, kareem, And worship Allah alone and do not associate any partners with Him. So any and all worship must be directed to Allah. When we slaughter uh, the sheep for Eid al-Adha, uh, it's, it's for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we uh, supplicate, it's only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't supplicate to our grandparents. We can't ask Wali Fulan to help us. We can't ask our uh, uh, Sheikh so-and-so or Imam so-and-so or Saint so-and-so. They'll never be able to benefit us. It's only Allah. Wa'budullah wa la tushriku bi shayin. Worship Allah alone. Do not associate partners with Him. That's our foundation. Ya ayu al habba. Qala bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'anhu. من أراد أن ينظر إلى وصية محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عليها خاتمه في فليقرأ قوله تعالى كل تعالوا كل تعالوا أتلو ما حرم ربكم عليكم لا تجلكوا بشيء إلى قوله وأن هذا صراط مستقيم فاعتبئوا ولا تعتبئوا الصبر ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that if you want to know or see what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was upon, then read in the verse, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says, say, come and read what your Lord has prohibited for you and do not associate any partners with him. Up until the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and verily this is my straight path, uh, and do not divide and, and follow the various paths. Again, it's Tawheed. It's worshiping Allah alone is what's going to establish that community. Coming back to that, teaching that to our children, teaching that in our community, adhering to that. When Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, Kuntu radifa nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala himar, faqala, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqq Allah al ibadi? وما حق لي بعدي الله قلت الله ورسوله وعلم قال حق الله علي بعدي أن لا يعذب أن لا أن حق الله علي بعدي أن لا أن لا يعبدوه ولا يشركوا به شيء وحق لي بعدي الله أن لا يعذب من لا يشركوا به شيء. so in this hadith معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه he was on the donkey with the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and it shows us the humility of the message of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he was humble. He didn't need the nicest, he could have had the nicest camel. He could have been uh, carried by the people even. He was the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But he was on a donkey with Mu'ad, radiallahu ta'ala. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, Mu'ad, do you know the right of Allah on his, on his slaves? And the right of the slaves upon Allah? And Mu'ad, radiallahu ta'ala, he answered, he said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of uh, Allah upon his slaves is that they do not worship any, that they worship him alone and do not associate any partners with him. And the right of the slave upon Allah, and only Allah gives this right, the slave cannot force this right upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish the one who, who does not associate partners with him. Allah will not punish the person who worships him and him alone. So this is again showing us the right of Allah. That's what's going to strengthen the community. And this is related in uh, Bukhari and Muslim. So all of these texts that I mentioned, they illustrate for us what our purpose as individuals and communities are. And that our methodology and our understanding and establishing and propagating Islam is also defined for us. 
So we should not become clouded and lost or led astray from the ultimate goal of establishing the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Worship as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, so that way we have an idea. What does it mean worship? Because a lot of us may have the understanding, or some of us have the understanding, that worship is similar to the way the Christians, okay, it's just going to the mosque, or it's just doing this. No. But Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said a beautiful statement which uh, encompasses worship for us. He said, Al-ibadatu ism jami' li kullu ma yuhibbuhu Allah wa yardahu min af he said that worship is everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, loves and is pleased with. From those things, uh, from, from uh, statements and those actions and, and, and actions and those inner uh, actions of the heart. So anything that Allah loves and is pleased with that's mentioned in the Quran or mentioned in the Sunnah is worship. When you marry for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and establish that communal bond in the family, that's worship. When you, akramakum Allah, as the Prophet والسلام, was asked and he said that even when you have relations, akramakum Allah, with your family, that's worship. That's worship because you could have been doing it haram, but you chose to do it halal. When you supplicate, that's worship. When you make salat, that's worship. All of those things that please Allah, when you fast, that's worship. And that is what Allah is pleased with. So ayyala habba, when we help one another and when we establish schools, learning centers, and masajid for learning and propagating and practicing tawheed and practicing Islam based upon the Quran and the Sunnah and the methodology of the pious predecessors, then you're doing the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're doing what pleases Allah, and it becomes an act of worship. The way in which we implement any program or communal effort begins with divine guidance. And this is why the Prophet وسلم, used to say in the khutbah to Hajjah, he used to say, the Prophet used to say constantly when he was going to give a speech, he began, and even when doing the, the marital uh, khutbah and so forth, he, he used to say uh, that the whoever Allah guides, then he then no one can misguide him. And whoever is misguided, then Allah, then no one can, uh, then no one can guide him. And that the best speech is the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Azza wa Jal. And the best guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So shouldn't we return back to the guidance of, the, of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if we want to establish our community? Of course we should. And this is why. Since the Prophet, since it's well established that the Prophet has the best guidance, then we have to look at a couple of points here. So when we want to reform ourselves and our youth by teaching correct Islamic beliefs and the other aspects of the deen, we can get the assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we can construct the pillars of the community and tear down the barriers that oppose it. So in ending this, I've just outlined just a few very short points that I thought would be the <clears throat> ways in which would help us uh, establish community. The first thing is that we should make the masjid an active place of learning and community members should take a few minutes after the prayer to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and learn something for your soul. And that if there's a, a kalima, something from the imam, reading a hadith, doing something to make the masjid alive. Because when we look at all of these places, which are supposed to be around for worshiping Allah, and I'm talking about the churches and so forth, that they, although they commit shirk, they believe in God. They have a concept of rububiyah. That when we look at how they worship, they reserve their worship for Sunday. We don't want to be like following their example and having the masjid only for the khutbah, only for Jumu'ah. We want to have it an active place of learning, that there should be books being taught and spend a few minutes, even if it's a 10 minute le lesson, and go through a whole book every day after Salat al-Asr, for example, or Salat al-Maghrib, 
10 minutes in one of the books that is establishing that learning center to making this a place of learning. And we already mentioned the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, Man salata tariqan yaltalmasuhu fi amman sahlallahu lahu tariqan ala jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever traverses the path of knowledge, that Allah will make easy for him the path of jannah. So if you want jannah, it's going to come through knowledge. It's going to come through gaining Islamic knowledge and practicing that knowledge. And may Allah bless him with tawfiq in that. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man yaradallahu bihi Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. So that's a sign Allah wants good for you. If you learn one hadith, even if it's one hadith a month, all of us can do that. Even if it's knowing the hadith and understanding one hadith a month, then at least you've advanced yourself from the last month. Last month you didn't know that hadith. Now you know that hadith and you're, next month you're going to learn another hadith. I'm just giving that as an example. Hopefully we learn more than that. But learning Ayyul Habba is going to help us live in the masjid and make the community more alive. Even this little gathering here, Walilahamd, this is life in the masjid. This is life between Asr and Maghrib. It's bringing some life. And the angels are here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is writing those people who are here for His sake, that are trying to benefit. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the ones who fall asleep, even the ones who come late, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those people will also gain benefit. Bi'idnillah ta'ala. The second pillar, Ayyul Ahabba, that I wanted to mention in closing is that we should encourage brotherhood across tribal, linguistic, and nationalistic barriers. That we have to go beyond those bounds. Because all of us are here, for us uh, specifically, we're here in America right now. Some of us are from Indonesia, some of us from Gambia, some of us are here, indigenous Muslims, some of us are from uh, other places, maybe Malaysia, and all kind of different countries, and that brings a lot of benefit to the, to the table. We can benefit from one another. If we go beyond those bounds, and we see and learn from one, each, one, uh, each other's community, the good that we have to bring to the table, and how we can make that effort, we not let that be our bound, that our binding, uh, our glue, that it's our tribal affiliation, but our binding glue is the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we realize that, we realize that, hey, what's going to elevate our community? What our children are, our children may intermarry. We should not be scared of that. Ayyullah Habba. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam united tribes. He united tribes through marriage. And the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum, they united, they married. Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhum and other uh, 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 non-Arabs, they married. They married from the, from, from other, from the Arabs and so forth. So Ayyul Habba, by strengthening those ties and not letting the blinders of our particular racial background and nationality hold us back, this is going to help advance our community because we're in it together regardless. If someone comes in the door right now, they're not going to distinguish. They're going to say, all those Muslims, we saw the Muslims do this. We saw the Muslims do this. We're brothers. And we already mentioned the evidence, so it's, it's not necessary for us to go back into that. But, Ayyul Habba, I want to mention one thing particular to this. As we mentioned, that taqwa is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at. He's looking at the hearts. The most important aspect, as we know our iman, our faith, it fluctuates. It goes up and down, and our iman is comprised of statements of the tongue and actions of the limbs and what's in our heart. And the heart, as the Prophet ﷺ said, is part of that, that's that foundation. The Prophet ﷺ said, Inna fi jizid mughatin, ida salaha salaha jizid akullu, wa ida fasada fasada jizid akullu, ala wa hiya qal. He said that in the heart, or in the body, there's a morsel of flesh that if it becomes uh, sick, the whole body is sick. And if it is healthy, the whole body is healthy. Verily, it's the heart. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to look towards. Allah, the Prophet sallallahu said in another hadith, he said, Inna Allah la yandru ilal ajsadakum wa la ila surakum wa la kin yandru ilal qulubakum wa amalakum. The Prophet sallallahu said, Verily, Allah doesn't look to your, your shape and your appearance. Uh, nor to your, you know, your color or your racial background or what have you, as, as a general meaning. But he looks to your deeds and your heart. Your deeds and your heart. 
And may Allah help us to purify our hearts and unite our hearts based on the Sunnah. The third uh, thing I want to mention, Ayu al Habba, in closing, is that we have to work together to purchase and establish a masjid and community center. We, we need to own this and we need to start thinking about this. I wish that we just owned this right now. That, that, that we don't have to rent this. Why are we paying someone? It's, this is not an attack on the non Muslims, but why are we paying someone, a non Muslim, to worship Allah in, in his building? We need this building. And we have to think, think like, let's establish Marak as a Sunnah. And, and, and I'm hopefully not going to get off the subject, but whenever I mention Marak as a Sunnah, I think of Yemen. Because Yemen is amazing, Ayola Habba. When you see the different places to study, Dara Hadith in Shehr, Dara Hadith in Damaj, Dara Hadith in Ma'bar, Dara Hadith in Aden. And, you know, these centers where people, they, they come together to study Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the pious predecessors. And what comes out of there is du'a that go all over the world. I know brothers from, I know many students of knowledge that are Mashaikh in Indonesia now. That's graduated from Jamasini and graduated from uh, and, and from the, the Marrakesh Sunnah in, 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 in Yemen. And from brothers from Gambia and from Ethiopia and from this, spreading the khair. So we, we need to own and establish <coughs> our centers and make those centers alive with knowledge. Knowledge, Ayyul Habba, is what's going to strengthen our community. Yes, we need lawyers. Yes, we need doctors. Encourage your, your youth to be Boeing engineers and stuff. That's beautiful. But really what we need, as the ulama in the past, up until now, say, they say, al And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu said, what's the, what's the dua we make, that we, we made in the beginning? Allahumma, inni as'alaka al nafiya The Prophet Sallallahu said, we, I, I, Oh Allah, I ask you for al nafiya I ask you for al nafiya beneficial knowledge. Then the ulama, they explain, what is al nafiya Beneficial knowledge is, ayyullah abba, it's, it's kitab wa sunnah. That's the assassin of the community. And as I mentioned, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need airplane pilots, we need all this stuff. This is great. This helps the community, especially if you use it for khayr, for khayr. But we need knowledge of the deen. We really need that. That's really what we, you know, we think we have nice little lectures here and there, but we need people to sit in this chair and to teach us and for us all to benefit. You know? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him with tawfiq and then ameen. Amen. So, ayol habba along with that, establishing those centers and, 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 and going across the nationalistic uh, lines, we also have to realize that we should never be stubborn and prejudiced to a particular uh, school of thought, a particular imam, a particular leader, a particular sheikh or what have you, that everything he says, no, that's the truth. No. Ayyul Habba. If we go to the four imams, who can you think of today which is anything compared to the four imams? No, you can't think of anybody you can relate who's like Imam Abu Hanifa. You can't think of any imam like Imam Shafi'i or Imam Malik or Imam Ahmed. You can't. No one, all the scholars that are even great, that are great mountains of knowledge in this time, they have to benefit from those imams. Those great imams are, mench are, are, are remembered through this religion. And even those great imams did not order us to follow them. He said, you know, there's great, there's narrations from Imam Abu Hanifa and Imam uh, Shafi'i that if you, if you find some, uh, a statement or a hadith which goes against my madhab, then leave my madhab, you know, go, go to the, go to the sunnah is the general meaning. Or if my statement contradicts uh, the uh, uh, a hadith that is found to be authentic of the Prophet Sallallahu then throw my, my statement against the, uh, a wall. Just get rid of it. This is what those great imams were. Because they knew that they didn't want to be followed, they just wanted to teach you. They wanted to teach us and leave us something behind. But it all goes back to the Prophet Sallallahu that's where that's, that's where our real imam and our leader is. And Imam Malik, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala was teaching in the Haram in the Prophet Sallallahu Masjid and he said uh, uh, everyone who speaks their statement can be rejected except the inhabitant of, heaven, of this grave and he pointed in the direction of the Prophet Sallallahu grave that everyone 
He makes mistakes. Even those great imams, we love them. You can't say every statement was correct. That's not, that's not from the Sharia. It doesn't, those great imams didn't say it. The people after them didn't say it. The people before them, the Sahaba radiallahu didn't say that. The Prophet said, All the children of Adam, they make mistakes. And the best of those who make mistakes in sin is those who repent. All of us, we all make mistakes. Those, those great, beautiful imams made mistakes, and that doesn't take away from them because they didn't make their mistakes based on their desires. They weren't people of Hawa. They were known for sunnah. They were known for loving the religion and spreading the religion for the sake of the law. Those are the people who cried, Imam Malik, teaching in the Haram, making dhikr, they had thousands, thousands of students before him. And, you know, they wonder, why, oh, Imam, what are you, you know, your, your head is down and you were moving your tongue, what's going on? He said, I was, I was revamping uh, my Nia. I was reaffirming my Nia. Because he's got thousands of students. Can you imagine Imam Bukhari, what that was like? And how, what they had to go through to purify their intention. So, again, that was a little off topic, but hopefully some, some benefits about the importance of knowledge and bringing that assassin in our communities. Ayu al in, uh, pertinent to this as well is the hadith which tells us how to rectify the community and when we have this blind following this prejudice and people break away and they want to do this one and this one wants to break away a jamaat the Balalians, this one wants to call them jamaat this and he wants to make the nation of Islam and this wants to be the five percenters and this wants to be Qadiani or this whatever whatever they break away and, and the new names they come up with it's coming back to what the Prophet said what did, what did Allah say first he said, If you disagree over something, return it back to Allah and His Messenger. How do we return it back to Allah? We return it back to the Quran. Go back to the Quran. How do we return it back to the Sunnah? We, uh, to the Prophet We go back to the Sunnah. We go to the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet And the Prophet said also, when you have differences, he said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnat al Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdin. He said, It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majmaeen. So when we have any differences in any of our communities, whether it be the greater Muslim community or a smaller community, a masjid or a, a, a markas, a da'wah, or whatever, we turn it back to the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet. If you want the answers and you want to, you want to rectify that and you want to. You want to know whose, whose statement is the correct? What goes in accordance with the evidence of the Quran and the Sunnah and the, the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and majma'in? That's what's going to bring our success. If we can humble ourselves, I don't care about leadership. No, so-and-so is the imam, he's the imam. So-and-so is this, fine. But not loving those positions. Those positions, because you want those positions to benefit you, not be held against you. Those positions can either benefit you or destroy you. Because, why? If your intention is not pure. The Prophet ﷺ said, and we're not going to mention this because it's a long hadith, but he said that, uh, in He said, the first people, the first people on the Day of Judgment who will be brought before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first one is a man who was martyred. And it will be brought before Allah, and he'll be asked what he did. He said, I fought for your sake and I was martyred. And then Allah will say, you lied, and throw him in the fire. The second one is the man who he sought knowledge, Islamic knowledge, and the Quran. He was teaching the people the Quran. Why? Because he wanted to be called a great uh, sheikh. He wanted to be called a, um, a reciter of the Quran. And he, he got that. He got that in the dunya. Faqad qil. It was said about him this. And then he was dragged in the fire. And the last one, a rajulun that was, he was tasaddaq, he was spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he spent in all the various ways of charity. And he said, I, I spent, that there wasn't a way. I love that, that Ibarra. I didn't, I didn't leave a way of spending my money except that I spend it in your cause. There's not one way of charity. That means this is the kind of guy that had his money. He, he built a masjid. Oh, the Muslims need this. I'll, I'll, I'll buy a place that they need uh, to uh, raise cattle and slaughter it. 
Oh, they need a place to make their janazas? Well, we'll build that too. Oh, we need a place for Eid? I'll do that. America's here and I want charity. He didn't leave any way of giving, spending his wealth in the cause of the law. But the problem was his intention. He did it for the sake of the people and that the people would say he was a spendthrift and they said it about him. Then he got his reward in this dunya. And as we mentioned, this dunya is the place of, uh, of amal and the akhirah is the place of getting that reward. And unfortunately, those people, because of their intention, their reward in the akhirah was the hellfire. They did the highest deed you can do in Islam, martyred, seeking knowledge, spending, but those things went against them. And finally, the last thing is that we should establish programs for the children based upon this correct aqidah, correct uh, Islamic teachings, as well as activities for our children to encourage them to come to the masjid and strengthen the brotherhood amongst them because they are our future. They're the future of this community. And as an example, looking at uh, what we see, although we, we already have plenty of stories, we see our youth out there. We know a lot of the majority of the youth are not here in the masjids. But what, what some of the small good we see in some of the places that are really active, like I like what I see in Abu Bakr Masjid in uh, Taqwila, for example, because they have the daily Quran program, those youth are tied to the masjid. That their whole life is spent, that's all, that's all they almost do. They, especially when, you know, they don't do anything else. They memorize Quran, their school is in the masjid, that's who they know as their, you know, for all the shortcomings and all the good and the bad, but that's, that's their community. So those guys will know each other. Maybe they'll marry from each other. They are establishing a type of community and their community also is based on memorizing the Quran. So when we make these centers a place of learning and a place for our children to come enjoy, also recreation. I'm not saying that we only have to, they only have to memorize the Quran and Hadith, no. But I'm saying that we need to tie them to the masjid by also providing activities. Okay, let's go on a camping trip. And me, myself, when I'm here, as the brothers know, I love to hike. I'll take the kids to hiking. Let's go. We'll take them someplace safe. And those kind of things, that builds the community. It gives us some activity. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah bless us with the al-nafir, as may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all with jannah to firdos and forgive us of our many sins and bless us to go forward as a community and overlook our differences. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to do all things. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Barakallahu khayra. Jazakallahu khayra, akhi khali, Allah yubarik fiq. Sallallahu alayhi ala hadha al-amal fi mizani hasanatik. Inna hu waliyu thalika wa al-qadira alayhi. May Allah reward you, inshaAllah. May Allah bless you. May Allah put this great reward. So your book on your book, inshallah. Amen. And also, early, uh, I will thank all the brothers that and the sisters that show up today for this potluck.